If you've got an old component stereo amplifier, don't throw it out, especially if it's got a phonograph input. Record players put out a lot less audio from their magnetic cartridges than did tuners, CD players or cassette decks. That means that the phonograph input socket is connected to a high gain audio preamp. That can be really useful for receiver projects because it means that you can have the entire gain of the receiver provided by the audio amplifier. There are times when you need both channels of the stereo amplifier, just like we're demonstrating here with the binaural direct conversion receiver. I'll get to the circuit in a moment, but before I do, I'll describe the setup. There's just three items. The receiver board, which I'll give the circuit for in a moment, a DDS kit by N3ZI, and the aforementioned high gain stereo amplifier. This is a DDS RF oscillator from a kit by N3ZI. I also added a two transistor buffer to provide sufficient RF output. The DDS is putting out 28 megahertz. That's because the mixer circuitry required need to signal four times the receive frequency. Hence, we're currently tuning the 40 meter band, and it's the early evening here in Melbourne, Australia. There's not much circuitry to it. I've got the 28 megahertz coming from the DDS. That goes into a 74HC74. It's split up. There are two outputs and the 74HC74 does a dividing function as well. So the two outputs are at 7 MHz and that's fed into a 74HC4053 or mixer. The incoming signal comes from the antenna connection through a broadband ferrite. I'm not using a narrow bandpass filter here, although I probably should. Into the 4053. Then from the 74HC4053, there are two outputs. One is called I and the other is Q. That just means that the Q signal is quadrature or 90 degrees out of phase from the I signal. Now the benefit of having signals out of phase is that they can be very useful for all sorts of digital signal processing work. So you could really just feed this into a stereo sound card on a computer and you'd have a software defined radio. The other thing you can do is you can feed it into an audio phase shift network comprising a few resistors and capacitors and provided that the phase shift network had a reasonably good 90 degree phase shift over say 300 hertz to 3 kilohertz or thereabouts you'd be able to get single signal reception so you could use it to receive SSB or CW quite well without too many worries from the audio image. This makes it quite different to a standard direct conversion receiver where you've got the audio image and the bandwidth is twice as much as it needs to be. Here's the circuit for the receiver. Very simple, just two ICs and a handful of other components. It would only cost a few dollars to build. The incoming signal at 7 MHz comes through this broadband ferrite transformer into the 4053 and that's mixed with two signals at 7 MHz coming via the 74HC74s. They are also divided by four, so you actually need 28 MHz coming in from the DDS to receive a 7 MHz signal. Then, as this is a direct conversion receiver, the differences present themselves at the output. But here, there are two outputs. You could call one I, which stands for in phase, and Q, which is quadrature, or 90 degrees out of phase from the I. Although I fed these outputs directly into the phono input of the stereo amplifier, which as I mentioned before, was very sensitive, you will normally need a bit of preamplification.
just on top of the amplifier I've got this two speakers you can't hear it in the video because I'm only in mono and not stereo but it's actually an interesting binaural sound effect as you tune across a carrier signal the signals seem to go from one ear and out the other and interference sounds differently than desired signals If you haven't experienced binaural reception, I'd certainly recommend that you do so, particularly in something like a CW contest where it's really musical. It's quite a different listening experience. It's not selective. You almost hear the whole band like a window across from one ear to the other. And in the case of the stereo amplifier, you've also got flexibility to change the selectivity, especially if you've got a graphic equalizer or failing that you could just use the bass and treble tone controls. So just to conclude, a simple, easy to build project only costs 15 or $20 and provided you've got a suitable stereo amplifier and DDS VFO, then you too can be enjoying the delights of binaural direct conversion reception. And once you finish with that, it's easy enough to get going with your computer and appropriate software to operate as a software defined radio. The sound suddenly went out and I smelt something from the amplifier. It turned out that I'd blown up the speakers as 4 ohm speakers, it probably wasn't wise to be connecting them to a 30 watt amplifier. Thank you, buddy.